Hey, can you speak up? I just ate an entire pizza. That's because after eating a hearty meal, our hearing tends to be a bit less sharp. During digestion, most of our bloodstream is directed toward the stomach, which takes away a bit from all the other organs. So, next time you want to go listen to your favorite band at a live concert, make sure to eat a lighter meal to keep your ears pitch perfect. On top of our stomach and left kidney, we have a magical organ that can grow back if we remove a part of it. Our liver can regenerate itself by making new cells called heptocytes. They begin to multiply once the liver is damaged. The seriousness of that damage defines if it can regenerate completely and the amount of time it takes to do so. Ever wondered what's worse for your body? No sleep or no food? Turns out, the lack of sleep is more dangerous. That's because if you don't rest, your body becomes exposed to a lot more risks. After 24 hours without any shut-eye, you can start to have memory problems and find it difficult to concentrate. At just 17 hours without sleep, you start to feel tired and groggy, irritable, tense, and more emotional. Ah! I need a nap. Your pain receptors also become more sensitive, which means everything hurts a bit more than it should. Oh, and it also affects your hearing, too. What? On the other hand, you can be well into your 24-hour period with no food before your body realizes you've stopped eating. In the first 8 hours, you just keep digesting the last meals you had. After those first hours, you start to use stored fats for energy. Not eating for more than 24 hours means that your body will start eating away at its own protein, which means you literally start to lose muscle. Rainwater isn't always safe to drink. It can sometimes hold harmful bacteria and viruses. Also, in heavily polluted locations, it may even meet other harmful materials. Some communities out there do depend solely on rainwater as their primary source of hydration. But does rainwater have any other health benefits? Not really, according to current studies. Some of those risky substances may be removed from rainwater if you boil it. But it's best to stick to the safer side and only drink water from sources that are 100% safe for human consumption. Now, we produce sweat mostly to regulate our body temperature and for some added moisture, like the one we need in the palms of our hands for a better grip. But sweat doesn't just show up on our skin. It comes out of around 5 million pores on our bodies. We're literally stepping on a quarter of our bones each day. We have just over 200 bones in our body, but about a quarter of those are in a very small surprising area – our feet. Since we have 26 bones in each foot, we end up with literally 52 in both. Now, our eyes produce tears for many reasons, like protecting themselves from infection or clearing up debris, such as smoke and dust, or when your baby done you wrong. But the number of tears we produce is quite surprising – up to 30 gallons per year. That's almost enough to fill a bathtub. Wow, that is heartbreaking. Our blood pressure wakes up hours before we do. That's because in the morning, the body produces a bunch of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. They help give us the energy boost we need during our morning hours, but they also increase our blood pressure, which is usually higher between 6 a.m. and noon. During the night, since we should technically sleep and perform no physical activity, our blood pressure drops down by up to 20%. Speaking of our vital fluid, our blood accounts for about 10% of our total body weight. We tend to think of our body weight as being mostly made up of muscles, fat stores, and bones. But there's a lot more to it. In a fit adult person, bones make up 15% of the total body weight. About 40-45% to is left to muscles, about 15% to fat deposits, and the rest are stuff like skin, tendons, hair, and other yucky things. Let's see. That adds up to… yep, 100%. Your lungs aren't twins, they're siblings. That's because they aren't the same size or shape. Your right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and your heart is to blame for it since your ticker tilts to the left a little bit. This creates a small indentation in the left lung called the cardiac impression, which is also what funny heart doctors do at comedy clubs. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Doesn't your house have a liver room? 
Many of your body measurements are quite symmetrical in surprising ways. If you were to stretch out both of your arms, your wingspan, and measure it, it should show how tall you are. Based on these similar measurements, specialists can even produce theories about what ancient humans used to look like. Looks like we've evolved to be increasingly symmetrical to appear more attractive and healthier to attract mates. Hmm. More so, since we've evolved to also walk on two legs, our symmetrical features help us to move around with the least amount of energy because it creates balance. Now, humans aren't natural champions when it comes to the scent of smell, that's for sure. But our noses can pick up about 1 trillion different scents. Scientists are still performing research on this subject and believe the number may be even higher. Some dog breeds may be able to notice scents somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we do, but turns out the best nose in the animal kingdom may be attributed to the elephant because of its staggering number and type of olfactory receptor genes, over 10,000, while humans and chimpanzees have less than 400. We tend to look at our pinkies as our most delicate fingers, but we do have more power in them than we think. Turns out that should our pinky finger be lost or affected, the overall strength of our grip may decrease by up to 33%. The liquid in our stomach, made of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride, is way more powerful than any acidic food you can think of, like lemons, pineapples, or tomatoes. The pH of healthy stomach acid should be between 1 and 3. So if you think about it, it's just below that of battery acid. Our hair strands are strong too. So strong that research is performed on them to duplicate their resistance into human-made materials. A healthy head of hair should be able to withstand up to 26,000 pounds. It's due to a little protein in the hair strand called keratin which you can also find in your nails and skin. Now, only about one-third of us humans have perfect vision. There are a lot more glasses and contacts out there than you'd think, making up about 66%. Apart from different eye conditions, our vision also gets worse with age. When we're born, our heads amount to one quarter of our total length. By the time we reach 25, our head will only be one-eighth of it. That's because our heads won't change their size a lot as we grow older, as opposed to the rest of our body, mostly when it comes to the legs and torso. Our brains are these super-powerful computers, and a single human brain cell can hold five times as much information as the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Maybe you remember that. We've yet to pinpoint the exact amount of data it can support, but in electronic terms, the storage capacity of the brain is around 2,500 terabytes. For comparison, the National Archives of Britain, which keeps over 900 years of history, only takes up 70 terabytes. It's probably the reason our brains need the most amount of oxygen compared to other organs. About 20% of the total oxygen that enters the bloodstream and that's despite the fact that it makes up only 2% of our body mass. Our normal activities, plus the effect of gravity, make the cartilage in our ankles, knees, hips, back, and neck slowly compress. Once you rest overnight, the cartilage goes back to normal. On average, you are somewhere around 0.4 inches taller in the morning than you are later at night. And that's why they call me Stretch. You're in the middle of the Sahara. You see a huge awning with a red target pattern. Its surface is so hot you could fry food on it. A drop of water is to hit the center of this target at the speed of light. Theoretically and technically, this experiment is impossible to conduct. But if it happens, then mysterious nothing awaits us. And each version of this nothing will be different. So we'll do three drops. Option 1. It's better to do it from a great height or space. You take off on a jetpack into the stratosphere. You have a bottle of water in your hand. You pour out one drop. Let's say it starts accelerating itself. In this case, even at a low speed, a drop of water will burn up in the protective layers of the atmosphere. In less than a second, the drop will turn to vapor. Let's say our planet had no such protection as the atmosphere. The air resistance would still get rid of the drop. The drop is flying down at a tremendous speed. The cold wind turns it into an icicle. 
The greater the drop velocity is, the stronger the air resistance is. The drop is moving faster and faster, soon reaching the speed of sound. Then, it just smashes into thousands of small particles. Under such conditions, the drop will never be able to reach the Earth at the speed of light. Nothing happens because nothing gets to the target. The next attempt involves changing the drop. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, ozone, and other gases in the atmosphere destroy any falling object. But what if the drop didn't meet all these obstacles? You change the internal structure of water chemically. So you put your jetpack on again and grab a bottle of water. At the height of the Earth's orbit, you open it and pour out one drop. It accelerates and there's no resistance. It passes through the hottest layers of the atmosphere, but doesn't burn, passing the freezing temperature, but doesn't freeze up. It flies to the ground, developing the speed of light, and crashes again. But nothing happens. The drop got the properties of a light particle, a photon. It's only under such condition that it might develop the speed we need. No object with mass, be it a car, a house, a tree, an ant, a single air, a grain of sand, or a molecule, can reach the speed of light. Only light particles are capable of it since they don't have mass. An intangible drop falls into the center of the target, and again, nothing happens. The third option. Scientists found a way to accelerate a drop to the required speed. They also have to change the molecular composition of water, making it more resistant to high and low temperatures. To make the drop reach the speed of light without any damage, you need to place it in a perfect vacuum. No air resistance, no protective layers of the atmosphere. We leave only space and the water. For this purpose, scientists need to build a long pipe. In the center of the Sahara, around the same target, people create a scientific center. From here, the pipe should go up. Its height is approximately the distance to the International Space Station. That's 254 miles, which is about the height of 50 Everest mountains. You can't connect to the ISS itself, as it's moving all the time. It revolves around the Earth, completing one revolution in 90 minutes. That's why astrophysicists and engineers should build a small station designed for one person. And this station should move parallel to a single point on the ground. The vacuum tube is made of solid stainless materials so that rain and high temperature couldn't destroy it. Inside, it's an alloy of titanium and graphene, the most durable metal on Earth. The pipe is built horizontally. Then, with the help of several helicopters and cables, it's placed in an upright position and attached to a small space station. The pipe is equipped with small pumps that pump the air out and block its flow inside. The water drop shouldn't touch the walls, so there's a special layer of gravity plates. They push the water away from the pipe surface, using the power of magnetism and sound waves. You put on a jetpack and fly to the station with a bottle of upgraded durable water. Your hands are shaking with excitement. Your breathing sounds loud in the spacesuit. You open the bottle, tilt it slightly, and pour one drop into a special box. Inside this container, the drop gets charged with the energy needed to develop the speed of light. Now it's ready for the journey. You look at the box, close your eyes, and press the start button. The drop flies into the pipe at a great speed. From the powerful blast wave, the entire station is thrown to the side. The drop accelerates, and at this point, the pipe made of the strongest metals on Earth begins to melt like ice cream. There's so much energy in the water now that it would be enough to provide electricity to a small city. And now, the drop reaches the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. The pipe turns to dust. It doesn't matter whether the drop hits the ground or not, because there will be nothing. Literally, all material objects – cars, houses, fields, oceans, computers, planes, ships, flowers, trees – should I go on? – will disappear. Intangible things, such as gas, air, radio waves, electromagnetic radiation, billions of terabytes of digital information – all this will also be gone. Boy, are you in trouble. Any sound – shouting, music, the phone ringing – will be impossible to create and hear. The light will disappear, and then there will be complete darkness. But let's rewind time and see exactly what happened right now. It won't work, though, because there's no time either. Imagine time as a stormy river that flows rapidly in one direction. Then this river falls into an endless pit and disappears completely. All this happened because a drop of water crashed into our planet at the speed of light. As soon as a drop begins to approach the needed speed, it loses its properties of water. It's now the most powerful and heaviest object in the universe. The energy that comes from it destroys everything for hundreds of thousands of miles. Concrete, ground, rocks, etc., 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 and on and on and on. Everything disappears. 
In the first second, it all gets shattered into millions of tiny pieces. Then these pieces are torn apart into millions of even smaller particles. The molecules burn up. Imagine a paper map of the world. If you wet it and tear it, it will turn into wet paper scraps. If you burn it, then part of the map will turn to ashes, and the other part will simply fly into the air in the form of smoke. The map will remain, but it will never look the same. But if you destroy the map's molecules, it's safe to say that the map never existed. There's no trace of its existence. The same thing happens to our planet. The energy coming from a drop of water makes the Earth never exist in space. And now the drop exceeds the speed of light. A black hole starts evolving. It expands and absorbs all the space debris. Then the Moon. Soon it will be the turn of Mars and all the other planets in our solar system. The black hole expands and increases the force of gravity inside it. Together with our planet, it absorbs light. It's getting closer and closer to the Sun. Our star splits into strips of light as if it had passed through a huge cosmic shredder. The Sun explodes and spits out an impossible amount of energy. It's believed that black holes appear after the explosion of stars. Right now, all the solar energy is being absorbed by our black hole. It's getting pitch black. The light from distant stars falls directly into the supermassive infinity. Meteorites flying within a radius of hundreds of thousands of miles around are also devoured into the unknown. There are many black holes in space, but only one of them was created by a small drop of water. The higher the speed of any object, the heavier it gets. Mass is the amount of energy that an object has. When water molecules reach the speed of light, their mass begins to grow. And there are no limits to this. It becomes infinite. An infinite mass forms a black hole. It absorbs everything, and nobody knows what's inside the black hole. All that remains is darkness and the unimaginable force of gravity. So I'm guessing here that we probably should not be doing this experiment, should we? How about we make a baking soda volcano instead? You can only cut a diamond using another diamond. It's the hardest natural material on our planet. Between retrieving the stones from the earth and the finished products you see in jewelry stores, a diamond goes through a complex process. Before they cut it, people need to consider which shape is best for the stone, so they don't throw too much of it away. One town in Norway, located north of the Arctic Circle, wants to become the first time-free zone in the world. The sun doesn't go down there at all between May 18th and July 26th. The locals don't want to follow the classic concept of time to get the most out of their 24 hours. Since they have constant daylight, they can't just act like the rest of the world. You can sometimes see people playing soccer in the middle of the night there, or mowing their lawns and painting their houses at 2 a.m. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is tilted because the soil under the building's surface is really soft. This was probably frustrating for the people who constructed it, but they eventually figured out the soft soil is part of the reason why the tower is safer from earthquakes. Because of the softness of the soil and the tower's stiffness and height, the tower doesn't resonate with earthquake vibrations. So the reason the tower is tilted is exactly why it's still standing, even in such an unusual position. You don't actually see pitch black in a pitch black room. It's a specific phenomenon where you see dark light or as people also refer to it, brain gray. It's a dark gray background many people see in the absence of light, and some even call it visual noise, since it's like an ever-changing field of small black and white dots. Watermelon is definitely one of the most refreshing and hydrating fruits, especially during hot summer days. But if you try some watermelon-flavored candies like gummy or hard candies, they're usually either mouth-puckeringly sour or very, very sweet. They aren't at all like the actual watermelon. It's basically impossible to replicate the great taste in the overly acidic-tasting watermelon candy. That's because its main chemical compounds are rare, and watermelon flavoring uses blends of cheap synthetic artificial flavors. Making high-quality realistic flavoring for candies and juices is possible, but would cost businesses a lot. Some people love the fake watermelon flavor, but most stick to their perception of how that fruity taste should be and are not fans of it. Why is there an expiration date on a water bottle? Of course, water doesn't go bad, just like salt or sugar. But even though water doesn't go bad, the plastic bottle does. When it starts expiring, it leaches chemicals into the water. It won't make the water toxic, but it can change its taste, so you might not get the mountain spring fresh water you expected. 
Another reason for the expiration date on bottled water is there's a rule all consumable food products, including water, need to have an expiration date. Also, many companies that produce these bottles use the same machines for bottling sodas and some other beverages, and these do expire. So it's way easier to just put a stamp on all bottles, whether necessary or not, than to buy new special machines just for bottles of water. How come identical twins don't have identical fingerprints? The pattern of ridges on your fingers is unique and stays the same throughout your whole life, which is why fingerprints are a valid feature when it comes to identification. Two people could be sharing identical fingerprints, but the chances here are less than 1 in 64 billion. Identical twins have slightly different fingerprints because the patterns are affected by both environmental factors during prenatal development and genetics. Fingerprints are not just something that's unique to humans. Gorillas and chimpanzees have fine ridges on their fingertips too. They also seem to be unique to individuals. So we all probably inherited this from a common ancestor. Why does a green screen come in green and not some other color? When you film someone in front of a green screen, it's a technique known as chroma keying. The green color gets digitally filtered out so that you can replace it with any footage you want to add. If the subject you're filming is wearing something green, the background image fills that in as well. That's why it gives the impression the person you're filming has holes in them. And green is good for this since it resembles human skin tones the least. Why do you feel dizzy after spinning? There are hairs lining the sides of tiny tubes filled with fluids that are located in your inner ear. When you move your head, these hairs detect acceleration, which means a change in the speed of a certain object. If you spin for long enough, your brain can't deal with the constant turn signals from your ear, and the way it adjusts is to zero them out. At the moment you stop, your ears report zero turning correctly, but your brain is still in the mode where it actively cancels this out. It actually thinks that you have now started spinning in the opposite direction. So, how can ice skaters do all those amazing things on the ice and not feel dizzy? When doing a pirouette, they lock their eyes on a fixed point and keep it that way. They whip their head around really fast when they're not able to twist their neck further. Their spins are really fast, so they gradually train to overcome the feeling of dizziness and learn how to keep their eyes horizontal. That way, the view is spinning around one axis only. Bond stars aren't that heavy. They're just really dense. So dense that just one teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh 1 billion tons. They are the densest and the smallest type of star we know of. Imagine squeezing 1.4 times the mass of our sun into a sphere no bigger than 6 miles across. They're dense because of the way they form. The balance between an outward pressure process in its core and the gravitational force that tries to contact a star hold it together. When a star loses its supply of fuel, gravity wins, contracts the star, and eventually makes it collapse. When stars between 8 to 20 masses of the sun collapse, this squeezes their core to be super dense. Their outer layers rebound and BAM! Here's a supernova. It leaves behind an extremely dense neutron star. If a star has 20 solar masses or even more, the core doesn't collapse into a neutron star, but into a black hole instead. When you spend a day at the beach playing volleyball, swimming, or doing some other physical activities, you expect to be exhausted. But even when you spend a whole day just chilling around, you'll probably end up just as sleepy. Your body still gets very tired because it's doing a lot, even though you can't see it. First, it's always working to maintain your internal temperature. When it's hot outside, it requires way more effort, and your body cools off in a way it dilates your blood vessels. This boosts blood flow and helps your blood get closer to your skin. Over there, it can offload excess heat. That's also why some people blush when they're hot. You sweat more when it's hot outside, again, to cool down. And your metabolic and heart rate both increase, so you lose a lot of energy even when you're just lounging around at the beach. Why do animals have differently shaped pupils? The pupil is a hole in the iris of your eye that lets light pass through the retina. The iris muscles change the size of the pupil, which affects the amount of light that passes through. Because our muscles are placed in a ring that contracts equally towards the center, our pupils are round. This brings certain benefits. It provides consistent focus over the whole field of view. But circular pupils are unable to constrict as tightly as some other shapes of pupils. 
Animals that hunt or are prey to bigger animals evolve to have big, sensitive eyes at night. Bright daylight is just overwhelming for them. That's why they have an extra set of muscles that pull the pupil into a narrow slit shape in daily light. Predatory animals have vertical slit pupils, like many snakes and cats. Such pupils help them to have sharper focus across the horizontal field of view and determine better how far their prey actually is. Animals with horizontal slit pupils like sheep and horses don't have sharp focus at the right and left edges, but they have wider peripheral vision. That way, they can spot predators coming after them a lot better.